So I found something wrong on the internet, which is hardly a surprise, but I am going to make a video about it anyway, and the off chance that that changes anything whatsoever. It's not gonna, but I'm doing this anyway. So, if you are looking for an invisible cast-on for 2x2 two two ribbing, and you do an internet search for it, you are going to have some problems. We all know the tubular cast-on. Invisible, because it's basically you're wrapping the knitting around and you got a little hollow tube in the middle. For all intents and purposes, you can't see the cast-on. Problematic to work. It takes a while. Is it worth it? Arguably yes, but maybe not the way you want to go. So you might be looking at, say, the alternate cast-on, or the alternate cable cast-on. Now, because of the way keywords work, I imagine, uh, these two start getting lost in the shuffle, and you start getting all alternate cable because it's the one people seem to know more about. The alternating cast-on, however, is arguably substantially better in, in every way than the alternate cable. It is also known as the Italian cast-on, I'm 99% sure on this, but I can't find my copy of the book that references it, and I could be wrong. So look at me putting bad information on the internet. But I'm Roxanne Richardson says they're the same thing, and if she says it, I believe her. Because she's got the book, definitely. The alternating cast-on is all kind of a long-tail method. As is the Italian, so they are, they are, they are. They are the same. The alternating cast-on can be used to work one by one rib, or it can be used to work two by two rib. And it basically, you can see at the bottom of that, the, the, the working yarn running through, or the yarn running through at the bottom of the thing. It is almost invisible, not as invisible as the tubular, but reasonably invisible. Uh, because of the way it's worked, it is ridiculously stretchy. It is, it is insanely stretchy. I do not know about its flair because I've, I am not a fan of a long tail version of cast-ons. I always misestimate yarn, so I tend to avoid them. Yeah, nobody is perfect. That's how it goes. Should I be better about that? Or, you know, that's a good point. Okay, we'll see. So there is the alternating cast-on. It's hard to find information about that because of the alternating cable cast-on. And this is where it gets ridiculously weird, because the alternating cable cast-on for one by one rib is relatively straightforward. The cable cast-on is the one where you are, if you have two stitches on the needle, you are working between those stitches from the front or the back. Yeah? You would do one knitwise, one purlwise, etc., etc. For some reason now, however, the internet has become convinced that the only way to work the alternating cable cast on in two by two is to cast on for one by one and then move everything around to actually cable your cable cast on, which I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's completely unnecessary. I don't know how this happened. I don't know what bizarre twist of the universe made people do this, but it's what's happened. If you Google alternating cable cast on, Article after article will tell you that you cannot do the alternating cable cast on by doing two knit wise and then two purl wise. Yeah, you can. You really can. And can you even tell the difference? There is a slight difference, and I'm going to do the little, you know, on the table show you thing in a bit, but from this distance, the differences are really minor. Someone would have to really be staring at your cuff to see the differences between the two of these. Yeah, I'm going a little blind, so I'm not the right person to ask, actually. But to me, they look very similar, but certainly not unworkable. It's not that you can't do it, it's you're gonna get a different result. So, let's have a look and see what those differences are. So, here we have the alternating cable cast on worked by the shuffle what I'm calling the internet shuffle, where you have to cast on for one by one rib and then move around some of the knits and pearls so you can get that to two by two. And the other one is worked by simply knitting two in cable format and then going pearlwise for two and then knitting for two. Uh, they are not identical, but they are both workable and here they are. So this 
is the... I had to put a knot in it. I mean, I can tell, but it's it's not that huge of a difference. This is doing two knit-wise, two purl-wise. Alternating cable, working it the way you th your brain thinks you should be able to do it. Uh, they are both equally stretchy, right? They are both very, very stretchy as a catched on edge um, with minimal flare. They are neither as stretchy as the alternating cast on, but they are very stretchy. They are appropriate, certainly for sweater bottoms and hems and whatnot. You are not going to get a lot of flare. You are going to, to get what, approximately what you see here. This is just a knit off or knit and purl bind off on both of them. It's the same thing. Same yarn, same needles, same everything done the same day. So I shouldn't have been that different in gauge. The difference you will notice is at the bottom. So when you do it two knit wise and then two purl wise, you will see that the bump that is here at the bottom moves up to the top in the second one. So it's more visible. It is almost invisible in the first one, and it is slightly more visible in the second one as you go through. This is always true. It does not seem to affect the purl wise very much. You can tell there's a little bit of a difference, but not really. Um, but your pearls are receded, so it doesn't really matter. In the, you know, casting on for one by one and then shuffling everything around version, you're also still seeing the knot at the bottom. But what you're also, to me, seeing is that everything starts to skew to the direction that you cabled in. All right? It is slightly more egregious on one side than on the other. It does lean left on the second stitch, not as much on the first stitch on one side. Which one was my cast on? I don't remember. Well, I suppose the tail would tell me, so I would have been going this way. So depending on whether you're working in the round or working flat, you're going to get a slightly different result. That would bother me. I would never keep track of which was which. But I'm not you. You can do whatever you want. I'm just showing you the differences. So to me, that's the, the big difference. And you can still see on the second knit stitch on some of them, it, it, you can still, or sorry, on the first one on some of them, that's because it does have the bump, right? Because that's the typical thing. So this one, the second bump is also invisible, but the stitch skews left. This one, the bump is slightly more visible, but nothing is skewing in any weird direction. And this is the most fiddly thing to work I have ever worked. I, I didn't want to do it, but I did it for you. To sum up, in terms of visibility to invisibility of the cast-ons that I am aware of, and bear in mind that there are like six million ways to do things in this craft. You can... It's, it, it, there, there, there's very, very few limits short of, oh, that will fall apart, right? If it won't fall apart, there's probably 19 different ways to accomplish the same thing, or something very similar. And a lot of it is a question of personal preference, or where you're going next and what you need to do to get there. Nonetheless, in terms of invisibility that I am aware of, you have the tubular is the most invisible. You have the alternating cast on, which is almost as invisible. And if you can find it on Google, you have to dig, but if you can find it, in fact, maybe I'll if I'm smart, I will insert some pictures here, and you can see that it is beautiful, it is workable if you don't mind doing a long tail cast on, and the lovely author of the book, whose name I'm always forgetting, Hyatt, possibly, uh, is it figured out how to do it for two by two as well. And then you have the alternating cables of whatever way you want to work those. Yeah, these are the least invisible of the three, but the easiest to work of the three. What do you want to knit? Whatever you want to knit. Yeah, I sometimes use the alternating cable cast on because nobody is ever going to... I forget. Yeah, I will look at my... If I'm doing a bottom up, which I don't do bottom up two by two very often. Maybe at a hat. Maybe if you're wearing it on a hat and it's stretched out, that might make the differences noticeable. Um, but maybe if you're doing it in a hat, you would only casting on 70 stitches. So go ahead and use the alternating. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. So here's to hoping that that clarifies a little bit of the confusion that's on the internet. If you want to use two knitwise, two purlwise to do the alternating cable cast on, you absolutely can. The world is not going to end. 
the knitting police will not be knocking at your door. You will be fine. Your garment will not unravel, and it will be pleasantly stretchy. And you can continue on with your life. Happy knitting. Thanks for watching. See you later.